We're live. Your finger. Always on your feet. Hey, Fee, and I'm your girl, Sharita Three, better known as Red. And, and we are Inspire Her, the Total Woman podcast, a new podcast all about uplifting you. Yes. Because, friends, face it, you are awesome. We'll be chatting up about topics we love to talk about, all the things we as women must juggle every day and the ish we complain about. Who's listening? We'll chat about the struggle, the job, and about him. Mm. You know who we're talking about. That boo, husband, boyfriend, ex, whatever you're calling them today. Mm. Our lovely hellions. I mean, kids. Our angels. But seriously, friends, life happens, and we don't always get a chance to talk about it. We take it on the chin, and we keep it moving. Because that's what we were told to do. Yep. But here on Inspire Her, the Total Woman podcast with Red and Fee, we are the friends you love to hang out with. We, we are, are here, here to inspire, inspire her, the Total Woman. Yes. Hey, hey, hey. Hello, hello, hello. How are you today? I am good. I am good. I am. Whew, girl, I'm I've been through some stuff today. We didn't had showers. We didn't had found out we had a tornado pass through here yesterday. Uh, All kinds of crazy stuff going on with this weather down here in Georgia. I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna be on those midnight train to Georgia this time this week. <laughs> no, that was, uh, I know this it's real crazy. It is real, real, real crazy. It's definitely been a long week. So I'm glad. Tomorrow is Friday. Yeah. Well, today is my Friday. So I'm today excited. is the Friday. I, I'm very excited. Yeah. Listen, today I'm I'm super excited because one, well, listen, for whomever is online who's watching, we want you to share, share, share. That's how we um get around. We got we got people. Texting me from um, this lady is in uh, Wisconsin somewhere. Text me today, says she enjoy our podcast. I was like, wow, okay. Oh wow! But you know, I'm not paying any attention to you. I'm looking at this food that Mr. David. Got well, we we gonna get to the food. We about to get okay. to the food. It's, we it's about to be <laughs> looking so good. I know, and um, he enticing us. Right now, looking at the food while we trying to talk. <laughs> you know what? See, that was a government. You know, we were having a conversation this morning. We talked about Wisconsin. That all of a sudden, somebody inboxing you from Wisconsin. I, you know, I don't know. know. You I'm listening have, to our I'm, phone. I'm gonna have to. Um, I'm gonna have to go back and figure that one out. Mm. All right. So look, um, we already done see some food. And a quarter of our attention got us destructed. I know. I know. All right. So today, listen, we have uh, Chef David Marble. He is. Sounds here. good. Huh? Is Sounds that, good. Is that how you say it? Marable. 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 I am so sorry. De- <laughs> Chef David Marable. Got to get it straight because people mess up my name all the time. We are going to um, talk with him about cooking with substitutes that will help us create healthier meals, of which mm. I, I definitely need that. So I'm going to go ahead and introduce him and we're going to get into some of this food because it just looked too good to, to, um, for us to continue talking. David has 30 plus years of government service. 13 plus of those years as a veteran in the U.S. Army. Thank you for your service, David. Yes. As an engineer and an interrogator. He continued his government service working for the Commonwealth of PA in IT and as an office manager. He transitioned his career into federal government, first when the Department of Housing and Urban Development excelling in the community service in community service and transitioning to the Department of Labor, focusing on emergency preparedness. David is the founder and executive director of Amazing Grace Blessings. He has been a passionate community advocate and activist for over a decade. Mr. Marable is 
responsible for the day-to-day -day operations, including, but not limited to, administration, general programming, partnership agreements, contracts, and events. Mr. Marable will also delegate needed positions for, for the organization, which includes recruiting, training, and the executive board and volunteers. The organization is looking to create partnerships to access more services. Welcome, yeah. to How are you? Yes. Welcome. Welcome. I see some chicken. Um, <laughs> no chicken. No chicken. We have chicken. some salmon. Salmon. I'm just making some uh, some salmon bacon. Okay. Do something a little, a little different for you guys. Okay. Oh, well, so tell us a little bit about why you started. Amazing. Um, I'm sorry, while you started Amazing Grace Blessings. Well, the inspiration came from my mother, Grace Marable, whom okay. my nonprofit is named after. Um, starting as a little kid, uh, my mother used to sell church dinners. I don't know if anybody's familiar with selling church dinners, but I was her delivery boy, taking out the flyers in the morning and then delivering the platters in the afternoon. And I was always around her uh, in the kitchen. So, you know, sneaking, she would say, if you want to stay around the kitchen, you know, sneaking little pieces of the food and trying to eat, then you're going to have to work for it. So okay. she put me to work as the delivery boy. And it, it just started there. I stayed around the kitchen, started stealing her recipes, trying to make it my own. Um, her community work, she has a food community um, ministry at her church, at Bethel Presbyterian Church here in Philadelphia, and I just got my inspiration from her and my community service efforts all came from her. Okay. So wow. what do you want to start? Because um, I know a lot of caterers, they, they cook some good food and it tastes really, really good, but it's not always good for you. So what made you think about starting creating substitutes? Well, my own personal story, as you mentioned earlier, I was in the um, Army, U.S. Army, and I got out after 13 plus years. My knee was given away. Uh, and as I got out, you know, the injuries was piling up and I started gaining weight. I'm one of those people that I don't have a uh, fast metabolism like everybody else. So if I'm not working out, then the weight is just going to keep on coming on. And I got over, I was like 400 plus pounds at wow. one point. And so, you know, I tried everything, the fad diets, the, the pills, the, the diet drinks, but, you know, nothing stuck. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I've been, I've had uh, surgery, that helped a lot. Then I've had hip replacement, that allowed me to start working out again. And, you know, it's just an ongoing battle where you have to be flexible to do different things. I mean, I was a person that at one time, I could, you know, knock down a two liter of soda Per day, and it was wow. just it was just constant sugar, and so I had to look at other options. I had to take care of myself. You know, kids were getting older. I had to be able to keep up with them, so I had to do something different. So as I for my through my love of cooking, um, I had to come up with other ideas as far as catering and for myself to entice people, um, get them excited. And so they wouldn't become uh, a couch potato or feel depressed through eating and have some type of energy and get excited about eating again, but being able to eat healthy at the same time and not losing the flavor at the same time. Okay. All right. Well, tell us about what, what you're cooking there. So what I decided to do today is a couple substitutes. Um, of a couple favorites that everyone likes. So I'm going to do, I cut up some bell peppers, some onions, and some scallions. I'm going to do a quick dish because a lot of times, uh, one of the reasons we eat unhealthy is we, we can't find the time to cook a meal, to take time and cook a meal. So it's either fast food or, you know, leftovers that's got, you know, heavy starches, gravy, stuff like that, high salt, stuff like that. So I'm gonna do a quick dish. I'm gonna turn the stove on now. That's my main reason, being able to have a time. Exactly. 
So I'm going to do something that we should be able to get done in about 15 minutes. Okay. Then I'm going to try to show you a savory dish, both still with flavors, um, that you can eat and still enjoy and not lose any flavor and not be depressed about. Because one of the hardest things when you're trying to diet or live healthy is sticking with it. You know, and, you know, far too often we fall off the wagon and when we fall off the wagon, we fall hard. Yeah. And we usually gain more weight than we lost in two weeks. You're right, we just so, need to get back on. Exactly. So I'm going to do a quick dish, a stir fry lo mein. And I cut off some bell peppers. I cut off some onions. I'm going to use some shrimp. And I'm going to use, instead of typical lo mein that has pasta, we are going to use zucchini noodles. Cool. Huh? And the good thing with zucchini noodles is you could really eat these raw. But when we cook them, we're just going to sear them a little bit and mix them with the vegetables and add the shrimp in, and then you'll be done. Um, for those who like pasta, I use this even when I made Alfredo. So if you're an Alfredo person and you want to replace your pasta with something, zucchini noodles. Oh, you, can buy, you can buy them already made uh, from the supermarket. I grabbed these today, I think it was like four bucks. Mm -hmm. And this is this will be about two two to three servings, depending on you know how much you want to eat. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to step away. I'm going to drop some shrimp into my wok over here. And I'll let you know what's going on. Um, the shrimp, there's no grating on them, just a little olive oil. So the first substitute. I want people to think about uh, using is olive oil versus all those other oils that you use. Okay. Why, why olive oil? Olive oil already has a good natural flavor, one. Two, olive oil is healthy for you versus canola oil, vegetable oil, all those different type of oils, especially if you're somebody that have uh, a cholesterol issue, you know, you don't want the same fat intake. You don't have that problem with olive oil. Olive oil actually helps your digestive system. It has a natural flavor. And you can use it for a lot of things. You can use olive oil if you're somebody that loves, like, eating fried chicken, fried pork chops, any kind of fried dishes. You can use olive oil in place of that and not have to use as much. Mm -hmm. so consider this. Is it a little bit more expensive than buying the regular oil? Yes. But what is common uh, in our community and us buying uh, different dishes, when you buy stuff and you see it's cheap, so you buy like a, uh, a quart of vegetable oil, whatever, it's probably around 4 to $5. It's cheap for a reason. It's cheap because it's not that healthy. And one so of the big challenges, would you say? I just had a question. Like, what's the difference between the virgin oil and the extra virgin oil? The extra virgin olive oil has more flavor, typically, flavor. depending on the brand. You really got to look at the um, brands that you choose. If you buy the store brand, then it's not it's going to have as much flavor as everything else you use. I usually, I use... Um, Pompeian, it's a good, good brand. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. that's my my common one. Okay. Another thing people like to use when they're frying and searing stuff is I can't believe this, and they're trying to use substitute is I can't believe it's like but I can't believe it's butter, something like that. Margarine, those things just block up your your uh, arteries. They're not natural, and, and so they're not good. Butter, butter. Yeah, that's not that's not good for you. Uh oh. It yeah. might be lower in fat, but it's as it'll be either higher in cholesterol or it's known to cause um, build up in, in your caloric intake as well as your artery. So it causing blockages. So if you're somebody that's already suffering from high blood pressure, stress, salt issues, all those type of things, then in the end. 
it's not good for you. Goodness, I can't believe it's not butter, huh? Okay. Yeah, I, can't, the, the is, I can't believe that it's that it's healthy because it's not. <laughs> that's I what that's what they should say. That's what they should say. All right. So we're going to give we're going to give those shrimp uh, another few minutes searing them. We're not going to cook them all the way through because we're going to add them back in when we cook everything else. The other thing I wanted to show you, another alternative, because I also have some grits on the stove. So if we get to that, I'm going to use, again, just olive oil, just a little bit of olive oil. And I'll brush that on this salmon. This is some salmon that I already took the skin off of. Okay. And I'm just going to rub some olive oil on it and then a little bit of salt and pepper. Fish has the type of fatty oils in it that you need and that's good for your body. It's got different vitamins in it that help you with uh, joints. And I'm going to add a little bit of pepper and a little bit of salt, but not table salt. If you want to use salt, use sea salt. Sea salt or kosher salt. So I table salt. Himalayan salt. Is that? What is it? It's called Himalayan salt. Yes. All of those, as much as possible, I want people to get into using uh, natural herbs and products. So as much as you can get away from stuff that may, that's already dried out, that's already got chemicals in it, then that means it's processed. If you can ever get uh, fresh herbs from the grocery store, then do that. Because you will notice the fresh taste versus the dehydrated and dried up taste drastically. Again, that's going to take you a little bit more food prep time. So that's when you get into um, doing your food prep the day before, maybe a couple meals. Um, so you can, when you get home, you can cook it quickly. Okay. All right. So I'm going to take these shrimp off. Another thing that I want people to remember and I'm going to just sit these to the side for a second because we're going to add these back real quick. And I'm going to add my onions to my wok. I'm using my wok. And all I had in this wok was a little bit of olive oil. No deep, no vegetable oil or anything like that. What's the benefit of having a wok? A wok gets hotter faster. It's great for stir fries. You can put food in it versus your, and I have a cast iron frying pan, so don't, 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 don't believe any myths. I do have a cast iron frying pan, um, but for stir fries, a wok is a tool. Okay. Um, and if the heat, it gives you more cooking service, allowing you to keep some food warm when you push it to the side, while you can still sear and cook other food right in the center. Okay. With you. Um, so we're going to let that cook. And this will give you natural for people that like onions and they like bell peppers. And it's your vegetables. Every the only thing you have here, you have your shrimp, it's part of your protein. And seafood is healthy for you, but you have to be careful with seafood because it can have a um, higher cholesterol rate. With, when people say I don't eat red meat, I don't eat pork. It's not that any one thing is necessarily bad for you. It's when you abuse it, it comes bad for you. So if you want to eat red meat four days out of the week, then that's not a, then you're abusing the situation. You can have a soda now and then, but don't drink like once upon a time that I was drinking, you know, a two liter in a day. You're abusing your body. So it's, it's how you eat these things and, and, and what duration and, and what capacity. We're laughing because I'm the Coke drinker in the crew. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I put down. And even though I'm, I, I've stopped. I've, I'm starting to drink this kombucha, which is um, not so bad. I just, I just heard that just yesterday. Someone was telling me about kombucha. It's not and so I'm bad. Sure I'm not used to it. And I'm the one that would eat the salmon five days a week. 
the salmon. I mean, fish is good. It's got a natural fatty oil to it. And I'll tell you a snack that you can get from salmon because my number one. See your face a little bit. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Okay. There you go. Uh oh. Cut him off. You done knocked the man off. I and didn't. But listen, we're going to wait for him to join back on. There he is. That food looking good. It is. I'm like, man, why? We need to be in, in person so we can taste test. I can see. Well, you're wrong if you want to come up to Philly. Feel free. I'm coming. I'm coming. You are right, look. Put my cowboys gear on. Oh, see. Them, see, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't. Then yeah. you can't get the house. Philly fans crazy. Then you can't get in the house. I don't, I don't let no cowboys gear in the house. So, uh, what was I about to say? Oh, a, a snack. Like when I make salmon, my number one taste test if she doesn't like the skin off a of salmon. So I de skin the salmon. But I keep it to the side. You put a little bit of olive oil in the pan and set that salmon. Some crispy salmon skin is a good snack. So you can eat the skin? Absolutely, you can eat the skin. Absolutely. Oh, you haven't lived until you have some salmon skin. All right, I'm going to add these zucchini noodles. Okay. I'm going to add these zucchini. I can see it. I'm going to add these zucchini noodles to the pan now, mixing that with the, the bell peppers and the onions. Okay, so is there a benefit to eating the skin other than it being tasty and crispy? The benefit is you don't waste your money by throwing it away. One, okay. two, it's a nice, it's a nice uh, snack. It tastes fatty. You don't really all you have to put on it is a little salt and pepper, but it's still the fish oil fat versus fat that you would have when you're usually frying fish and you know in a pan with all that vegetable oil and stuff. Like I said, two tablespoons of olive oil. All you got to do is sear it. On both sides, I'm telling you, you're going to come back and you're going to thank me for that. Wow. Well, I salmon put my yes. um, air fryer. I put my salmon in the air fryer. It is so good. Okay. Yes, air fryer. I haven't, I haven't gotten into using an air fryer yet. Really? Maybe one day. You are staff, so you probably, you know, don't need to <laughs> use it like talking about it. Um, what was the what other? What the other, other snacks you got? Go ahead. What other healthy snacks do you have? Like he and I were talking, and um, she was saying I was saying you have to eat like small meals throughout the day, but sometimes you're not always hungry. So we were talking like um, carrots or celery with peanut butter, little things like that. What other healthy snacks do you recommend in between meals? Well, other than my there's, some, there's some places where you can buy like sugar free snacks that you might like. It's all about what can you consistently stick with. Like a beverage drink that I that I have now instead of sodas and all that is I have in my refrigerator like a three gallon beverage dispenser, like you would see at a catering event, and I fill it with water. I slice up orange slices or lemons, put it in there, and I only put a third of the sugar in there. The reason I do add sugar to it is because, like I said before, you don't want to fall off the wagon. So you have to do something that you can you'll stick with consistently, but you won't, you know, go all the way back to the bad way. So if I just drink, I drink a lot of water. But if I was just to drink just water, then I would have a hunger for soda or sugary yeah. drinks all the time. So adding a little bit of sugar and a little bit of that fruit flavor and, and everybody drinks it. And then also when I go to Costco, I get uh, the buy drinks. They're only 10 calories and they have a good natural sugar flavor. Not that, um, that aftertaste yeah. sweetener flavor that other drinks have. So you have to find something that you're comfortable with that works for you that you know that you can stick with. You can't be upset about it. If you're eating it or drinking it and you're like dreading it at the same time, it's not going to stick. Right. And then you're going you're gonna to have a cheat day and it's going to turn into a cheat weekend <laughs> and then you're just going to be cheating. Yes. <laughs> I like the ice drinks. You ever heard, had the ice drinks? 
No, which drink is that? It's like a carbonated flavored drink. Um, it's called ice, but like a sparkling drink, sparkling juice or something. It is so good. There's no sugar, only five calories. Um, it's real. It tastes really good, and it gives you that fizz. You know, like with the sodas, a lot of times it's that acid taste. It's, it, I'm assuming it's kind of like it has some tonic water, or salsa water, or something in it. They kind of give it that fizz. But it's really good. Next time you go in the grocery store, it's on the water aisle. Look for ice drinks. Okay. Ice drinks are good. I love the cherry lemonade. I think it's the cherry, the cherry limeade or something. Anyway, it's delicious. For anybody who's joining now, there, um, he's talked to us about his substitutes that he's using right now. He substituted um, olive oil for the regular oils that we have been using. He substituted. Oh. Um, we still here? Okay, we're still yep. here. Is it? Oh. The noodles. The noodles are what? Um, zucchini? zucchini noodles. Zucchini noodles. And um, use um, sea salt instead of regular salt. And that looks really good. And he cooks that out of amazing. Salt. And you can use, like I have the olive oil bottle I showed you before, or I have a spray, and it's zero calories, mm -hmm. these sprays. So for those that like to make omelets um, and, and frying them in the pan and whatnot, get you some olive spray, olive oil spray, versus the regular canola spray. I'm going to add, I like to have your live milk. You live me and Johnny. That's fine. You didn't say anything wrong. So I, I add. Uh, I also add a little bit of eggs to my stir fry. Okay. Eggs. Yep. Scr I scramble some eggs in, and that gives it just a little bit of uh, a different texture. For mm -hmm. those that don't want to eat the yolk, you know, you can keep the. You can either separate the yolk and just use the egg white. Or you can uh, keep it in there and scramble the whole thing. I definitely use it when I make um, fried rice. And okay. the trick with fried rice is instead of using white rice, which has zero nutrients, you can go with brown rice or you can go with cauliflower. I love cauliflower rice. I just gotten used to cauliflower rice. I love yeah. it. Now you can buy cauliflower rice already. Um, uh, chopped up and blended in the supermarket, or you can buy the whole piece of cauliflower. I do it. I use cauliflower two ways. I've used it to replace mashed potatoes, cauliflower, or I've used it to make fried rice. So if you take the cauliflower, put it in a blend. If you take cauliflower, put it in a blender. Once it's done chopping up, it looks just like rice. And all you have to do is get it in the pan and heat it up. You don't have to cook it for a long time. And you have to be careful because there's a lot of water in it. So you don't want to cook it too long. So when you make it into mashed potatoes, is the consistency the same? No. Then you have to work with it. Okay. So how do you how do you work with it so that you get a mashed potato consistency? There's a couple ways. Um, one is you add something that will help thicken it. And what I discovered is beans can help you beans. thicken cauliflower. Beans? Um, what kind of beans? You can use like a white lima bean. Uh -huh. And what you do is, here's, here's one trick. So you keep good flavor. However you make your a broth base. And we're going to talk about gravy in a minute, too. So I'm, I'm not going to let y'all lose out on anything. Yes. Whenever you make a broth base, so when you use your vegetables, like when you make a stew, your onions, your celery, your bell peppers and all that, put it in the pot, boil it, add beans to it. Let the beans cook all the way out until they're just soft so you can just mash them in that water. Put that water and those beans in the blender, and it's going to thicken. So if you're going to use cauliflower and you're going to make mashed potatoes and you want to keep that white color, then you have to use like a white type of bean. So some type of like 
white pencil beans, something like that. And that'll help thicken it and you won't lose the consistency. Okay. You can add a little bit of butter if you want, or you can um, not add butter. You can add a little bit of olive oil, but keep that flavor. That doesn't sound appetizing to me. So I might try the rice, but I don't know about the mashed potato. I guess but if you gotta, you gotta have somebody make it that knows I how to say, make it. Exactly. If the restaurant makes it or somebody that knows, and I would definitely try it. But me trying to make that, absolutely not. I don't mm -hmm. think that's gonna work out. You know I what I do? I like, like cauliflower rice, but I love it. It's good. It's really good. Right. I like, like rositi, rosito. So we're gonna, you want to bend it down. We're going to plate the stir fry. Let me get you at the right angle. I wish I could flip this camera. I don't know why my camera doesn't flip. We will be patiently waiting because I want to see. Right. Right. Here, I'm going to have somebody come stand over and I'll let them know when the angle is right. Stand right here. Right there. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Right there. A little bit to the right. Your finger. Your in front of the camera. Your finger. <laughs> All right, look, let me do this real quick. Help me. Okay. 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 Y'all listen, we got him to do this. I called, I asked him to do this on Tuesday. Was it Tuesday I contacted you? Asked mm. him to and he said yes. So he's he's um he's doing a good job putting oh look at that. That looks good. See you can eat healthy, you just gotta know how to substitute. You can still eat the same things you like. I'm going to get me some zucchini pasta noodles noodles tomorrow. And shrimp is my favorite. Y'all can have shrimp, beef, yeah. pork, and steak and all that stuff. Give me some shrimp. <laughs> Give me some shrimp. Give me some shrimp. Shrimp. Give me some scrumps. Yeah, I like, I love shrimp too. That, that looks, looks good. good. See, and he knows how to plate it, knows how to make it look good. Well, he's a chef. He's on um, mute. Oh, that was good. You're on mute. Uh oh, he lost him for a minute. But listen, one of the things, and he'll he'll be back in a minute. But one of the things that we want to make sure happened was we showed you guys some ways to substitute because we need it. Me and Sharita was talking about ourselves and our bodies and how, you know, the way out this quickly. So we need to do some other things to make sure that we're healthy. Because when you're getting older, you can't get that time back. So getting him to come in here and help us figure out how to continue. Like he said, if, it, if it's not appetizing to you, you're going to fall off the wagon. So we mm -hmm. just Good, some good healthy meals for him to show us how to cook them with substitutes that'll make us want to continue to eat it. So, and it, okay. I added some. Um, can you hear me okay? Yeah, you yeah. good. Okay, so I added some green onions as a garnish at the end, still okay. healthy. Food. Okay, so you have your zucchini noodles, uh, bell peppers, onions, and shrimp. Only only seasoning I use besides the natural herb seasoning is sea salt and black pepper. And the yeah. olive oil was the oil that we use. I sure so. wish I could taste that. Me too. And it wasn't a lot of ingredients. <laughs> Where's the taste tester? <laughs> she she behind the camera and don't want to get on, get on, get on the camera. She I mean, gotta she gotta taste, she gotta taste the food and tell us what it tastes like. Mm, mm. See, thing, all right, let me let me get it. Minutes. It only took about fifteen minutes, and it's not a lot of ingredients. 
Exactly. So it's equipment. So a couple things before I forget about this that that you should save. So with the shrimp, right? I bought the shrimp at the market. You know, it was in the frozen section, and they said it was uh, clean. Always check behind them. Um, you know, check the shrimp because it's supposed to be de-veined and de-shelled. So they'll have it split and it'll look like they de-veined it. But when you always butterfly my shrimp so I can double check it and make sure you get all the de-vein out. For those that don't know, and I apologize if I'm telling you something that you already know, the vein in shrimp is the poop. You don't want to eat that. I'm just putting it out there. So y'all know when y'all buying at all these fast food places, if you see some shrimp and it's got a black line in it, you don't want to eat that. Okay. Oh, I think I'll take it off too. But yeah. I know I take it off now. All right, so we're gonna come around here and let her Hi. my number one my number one show them the ring. Show them the ring. I gotta you know show them the ring. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna tell them about all of that. We're gonna tell them about all that in a little bit. <laughs> and we're gonna let her do the taste testing real quick. So it's a zucchini no main. And be honest, Mama. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was good. Now, if you want, some people like to add soy sauce. If you're going to add soy sauce, then get a low sodium soy sauce, no. so you don't mess with your uh, with with your with your healthiness and what you're trying to do. So, so you can have soy sauce, just get a low sodium soy sauce. Okay. So brown rice and cauliflower rice instead of white rice. White rice has no no um, nutritional value. No value at all. No. No, none. Nope. And that's what we were raised on, white rice. Indeed. Right? And if you if you if you're somebody, some people don't like shrimp without uh, a breading on it. Mm -hmm. So what you can do, instead of using flour, like white flour, just like white rice, has no nutritional value, you can use a wheat flour, or which can be, which is a little bit more expensive than white flour, if you don't want to use that, cornstarch. Cornstarch is very thin and very light. What about a seafood breader? I mean, I, I can do without the fries from... The seafood breaders is bread. So if you want to avoid all the starches... You know, panko crumbs, bread crumbs, it's bread. And then it's usually got salt and other stuff in it. It's got de dehydrated herbs in it. Like I said, as much as you can, get fresh herbs. If you are cooking for like a big family or whatever, definitely get fresh herbs because then you won't waste anything. Okay. Cool. Um, so you, you're going to tell me about gravy because, you know, we're in the South. Our family from the South, we used to Gravy on everything. I cannot make gravy to save my I life. I want to know what can we do about sauces, all those types of things. There, yeah. right there. So now we're making salmon bacon. So let me tell you about gravy. Salmon bacon. No, why salmon you bacon. This is your replacement for pork bacon. All you do, you buy normal salmon. Two ways, two ways to make it. Oh. You buy you buy your normal your normal salmon, and then you just cut it across the grain in like quarter inch strips. Okay. Similar, similar to this. Oh, I'm thinking you real bacon. No, it's salmon. Wow. And okay. Oh, you're making me hungry right now. Only thing I added was olive oil, salt, and pepper. Salt and pepper. There you. The other way I make it is I'll add a little bit of brown sugar and I'll put it in the oven, give you a little different type texture. But that will replace uh, your pork bacon that people like to eat. Turkey bacon, which usually doesn't have a lot of flavor in it, um, and beef bacon. So you get away from all that fat. The only fat that you're eating is the natural fish fat, which is good for you. And I love some salmon, so. I've never heard Indeed. of beef bacon. Beef bacon? Oh, yes. It's out there. What is it made from? Cows? Yeah. Like, that would be his beef. 
<laughs> but it's a, a scrap portion of the cow that's, you know, wow. not commonly used, that's in a fatty area. Um, now, the salmon bacon I'm making with grits. Grits are good for you. I know. It's a, it's a grain. It's good in protein. It's a good um, digestive food for you to eat. Grits. Where do we get in trouble? When we start dumping in the butter and the cheese. And the so, sugar. And it, now see, that's a southern thing because I don't add sugar to yeah. my grits. No, I, if I not, eat, that's not a southern thing. But I don't um, eat grits. So that's I don't know. not a southern thing. I eat I don't cheese know. In, my, in my oatmeal. <laughs> in oatmeal, yes. Not in my grits. Grits for butter and salt. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Who was, it? was that the doubt? Was that the cowboy fan that said? Oh, that, mm -hmm. they, that, that explains it. Cream of wheat. <laughs> Cream of wheat and hot cereal. Yeah, sugar. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. But for grits. So, so, how do we get flavor in grits and avoid the butter and cheese, which we like to add also? Yeah, tell me that. Anytime you're boiling something, if you're going to make rice, if you're going to make pasta, anything that you boil, add flavor to your water. What's the flavor? Chicken bouillon, beef mm. bouillon <laughs> cubes. Chick Some people use chicken broth or one of those vegetable broth or something like that. If you're going to use processed broths, get low sodium or no salt because you know you like to add salt to your food already anyway so yeah. why double up on it so when i make my grits i add chicken bouillon cubes to the water first let that boil in there and i add the grits to that and it's already got a natural flavor to it mm. now the cubes that's not high in is that good for you is that what's that the grits the bouillon oh, cube, the bouillon cube. Read, read what you put in there. You can get some that are low sodium and not a lot of salt in it. That's the ones that you want to get. Okay. Okay. Let me turn. Let me turn. The, the salmon bacon is, is sizzling. Can I see? You need to scramble up some eggs, too. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting there. Look Man, listen, we coming. Me and Sharita, we coming. We're going to do a live show. We, we coming to eat. No, you ain't said nothing. <laughs> listen, we ain't playing. Ain't nothing but a thing for us to get on the road now. Well, now, now, while I'm doing that, let me get over here and stir up my grits. Some like them thin. Oh, man. Some like them thick. Down a little bit. See, you want them grits. I like them right there. Give me the salmon bacon. I'm, let me, and then I'm gonna do my uh, secret weapon that I put in the microwave earlier. Something that I told y'all about. Turn this fire down and grit. Let me get a plate for you. All I need is some low fat biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> I need I some low fat exist. biscuits. I don't know how you do that. <laughs> you know what? What we told you this morning. All women want to do is eat and lose weight. Eat and lose weight. <laughs> That's all we wanted to. Yeah, it's so hard to put the lime on fire. Uh-huh. That looks delicious. Save the salmon bacon. <laughs> I know. I'm going to have to try that. I got some salmon in there, too. That only happened. That only happened because I didn't have my uh, exhaust. So nothing burning. <laughs> Save the salmon bacon when you run out. All right, so I'm gonna put that salmon bacon to the side real quick. <laughs> real quick so how long did that salmon bacon cook, David? So because it's cut uh, like a quarter inch, it's only uh, need to cook for like three minutes each side. What if you want so it crispy? <laughs> if you want it crispy, hey, go ahead, but don't let it get dry. Yeah, just don't let you. Don't let your bacon get get dry. I want my bacon to play like it's bacon for real. Uh oh, he about to make you some eggs, Sharita. I know. Put some cheese in too. Uh -uh, <laughs> I'm gonna throw two eggs in here real quick. 
The pan is real hot. The pan is real hot. I'm going to turn it off. Okay. I'm going to turn it off with black pepper. So you're throwing the eggs in the same pan that you had the salmon in? Yes. Okay. That's the only thing that was in there. I don't need to add no butter. I don't need to add any more oil. It had its own oil. And I like my eggs cooked soft. Me so too. this is going to cook in like 45 seconds. So have you heard of people putting a little water in your eggs to make the eggs a little fluffier? Oh, water in your eggs? Yeah, just put a little water in it, I heard, to make them, make them a little fluffier. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen that, yeah. Especially when you, um, if you're low on eggs and you want to extend them, I've seen people, I've seen people add milk to them. Yeah, I heard milk. So you get more out of them. So I'm going to take that off. Oh, we're going to do some, we're going to do some plating. Yeah, milk. I heard milk. Now, I told you earlier about making gravy. Yeah. This is... Oh, hold on one second. We'll come over here. The gravy, yes. Earlier, I made a, a broth with um, vegetables, some celery, some onions, um, bell peppers. What else did I have in there? You make a homemade gravy. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So Good this time. is I took some bell peppers, some onions, celery, boiled it, and then I added red kidney beans. Mm. And you can get this as thick as you want. You want it thicker, add more beans. You want it real thin, add less beans. That's all to it. But it's flavored from the natural um, vegetables that I put in there. You can add a little salt, a little pepper, but don't don't go crazy with all that. Because the, And the beans, red kidney beans, or most beans, are great in protein, and they are a digestive. Uh, they allow you to digest your food better. So mm. right? with the red kidney beans, you um parade that how did you how'd you get it to that consistency? So what so after I cooked it down, I put it in the blender. Okay. All right. All right. So I'm gonna just lay that in there. Some like it to sit in the gravy. Some like it on the outside. So you can put your grits Some some people from the south think of it as a, a red eye gravy. Yeah. <laughs> and you can use this. I also use this gravy to smother fried pork chops. So if you're mm. one of those people that like fried pork chops, smother fried pork chops, and you want you don't want to get rid of gravy. Because the gravy has the grease in it, the flour in it, and all that, you know, fat from other stuff. This has none of that in it. Okay. It's only the only grease or oil is the olive oil. Mm. That's it. This is not fair. <laughs> and so you can put the salmon bacon on top of that. I'm gonna lay some of the fry, some of the scrambled eggs on top of there. Now, if you want your eggs to be bright and yellow, then then you do want to switch out the pan, you know, clean the pan. But I don't mind it because it's got flavor in it. And then on top of this, I'm gonna lay. My salmon bacon. That looks like a get from New Orleans or something. Yeah. I'm going to add some more Restaurant. green onions. Let me get my. Let me. Let me. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for y'all to come on up. I want, man. We not come. I'm gonna need five different dishes. <laughs> that looks good, even though. Yeah. So that's good. That's, That's your breakfast meal, and it's healthy. There's there's no oil. There's no uh no heavy salt. The only salt we use is sea salt. You got your natural seasoning or flavor from the salmon. So you have salmon bacon over some scrambled eggs, grits, and a red bean or red eye gravy. Oh man, 
Okay. Darius said he gonna take his grits with sugar and butter. See that? Let me, let me switch it up. You ain't had to add no sugar. You ain't had to add no butter. You didn't have to add no cheese. All right, we gonna we gonna taste test one more time. She's still over here. She's mm -hmm. she's still here, y'all. I need you to get some dry ice and send that. <laughs> See, she, she, you know, she picking with us, Melinda, because she get to eat the food. And I'm like, go eat the food, girl. Eat the cake. Eat the anime. Eat the cake, anime. Eat the cake. Mm -hmm. See, that's not. Like I said, for those that like, you know, they're gravy thicker. Then all you have to do is just add more, more beans. Okay. And that, and that'll thicken it up. You know, I like it a little loose. I don't like, I don't like stuff after you let it sit for a while. Then it's all stiff and pasty. <laughs> We can't see her face. Yeah. We can see that beautiful <laughs> ring though. That ring is stuffed in my eye. It's so tasty. So David, very tasty. David, where my biscuits at? Can I get She said, Where my biscuits? My biscuits. Yeah. 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 If we meet again, if we made it meet again, I'll show you how to make some bread out of cauliflower. <gasps> okay. <laughs> You talking about if we meet again, you playing. I'm co we coming. I'm coming. Well, you ain't said nothing. All right, listen, y'all. Pepper boys and Eagles, man. We ain't scared of them cowboys. Bring come on up here. <laughs> I'm coming with my jersey on. Yes. Listen, mm -hmm. y'all. Here's Then you're gonna you gonna get a paper bag at the door. You ain't gonna get in the house. <laughs> well, we we will sit there at the table and look through you, look at you through the window, I'm eating the food out the plate. I'm gonna be outside. I'm good. With her air ugly jacket. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but that was awesome. I'm gonna try some of that other stuff though. I'm gonna try that first dish, and I'm definitely gonna try the salmon bacon. I'm gonna try all of it. I gotta go get some of that pasta. Cause I don't know about. See, you put the beans in a lot. My stomach has been acting up, and I I need to change the way I'm eating for real. Seriously, I have got to do. He so said it's good for my digestive tract too. Yeah, the beans and all that stuff. And I appreciate you for breaking it down to us and telling us, you know, what no problem. And all that. Not a problem. I love it. Oh, before I forget, the other thing I meant to tell you, when I was telling you about making those broths and those stocks, uh -huh. you saw the day that I used shrimp. Mm -hmm. When you buy your shrimp, if it has the shells on it, don't throw the shells away. Put those shells in your water. Mm -hmm. That is good flavor. Mm -hmm. Really? That is flavor. That exactly. You make start making your own seasoning, your own broth. When you have any kind of meat that has a bone, if you are like deboning that meat, keep those bones, put them in water with some vegetables, and make your broth. The inside the bones is the marrow. The marrow is where all the flavor is. That's how they make your, your broths that you're eating, these beef broths and whatever. They take all those scrap bones and they boil them down and they let it season that water. That's broth. Make your own. That's yeah. awesome. So that first dish, what would you think was the amount of calories and fat in that? Do oh, you know dish? Way to break that down? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, cause I compared it before. So your typical... Bacon and eggs cook, you know, the normal style with the oil or butter and all that. Uh, say four strips of bacon, two eggs, some grits with butter, salt, butter. That gets you right around 900 to 1200 calories, depending on how much cheese and butter you put in your grits. The salmon bacon and grits meal I just showed you will get you right around 550 to 600 calories. But that's a whole lot of protein too, and that's those yeah, things. right. So, yeah. Nutrients as well, that's exactly, right. and it will help your digestive tract. Please, it's not a cleanser, but it will help you digest and break your food down better. When you drink all those fatty, when you use those oils, mm -hmm. they slow down your digestive tract and keep you from breaking food down. Take it from a dude that was four hundred plant four hundred plus pounds over a year ago, and now I got about. 50 more pounds to go because, you know, I got a wedding prepared for at an island somewhere. <laughs> I got I to gotta try to look good. But uh, it's, it's, it, it will help you tremendously. All right. 
Well, listen, guys, he gave us a ton of information. And if you didn't see it, a lot of our listeners, they um, do the replay because Thursday, Thursday nights may not be good for everybody, but you'll see people will start um, having questions and we'll send those questions to you if they come back with comments. Um, Absolutely. How to substitute pasta with the um, zucchini pasta noodles. Mm -hmm. Sure. How to substitute bacon, gravy, um, what to do with our grits. I mean, this you cook two meals, and I'm hungry right now. So thank you for nothing. I appreciate it. Well, it's not a problem. The short amount of time. Great job. As soon as, as, as soon as I get settled back into the new house, I'll be posting of uh, like five to ten minute healthy meal video clips on my uh, Amazing Grace Blessings YouTube channel. Yeah, so yeah. Amazing Grace Blessings YouTube channel, and he'll be giving out those tips. He has food on there. He has um little uh, a video that I stole and put on our page, so you all can see some of the foods that he has made, and all those foods made with love and great nutrients. So go ahead and follow him, and you'll get some 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 good tidbits from him. And maybe you know one day. If we have an event, he'll he'll come and maybe cook us some food one day, maybe. <laughs> Say no more. Mm -mm. All right, I got to tell y'all. Go ahead, Sharita. No, I'm just going to tell me you appreciate Chef David. You can go ahead. I got to tell y'all something. Something that is very exciting that I am excited about. This man, um, Melinda Sue. This man is going to be our cousin. He is going to be our cousin next year in April. Him and my lovely cousin. I know she want to get on camera. Where is she? Where, where you, know is she don't, you know she don't like the camera. I know she want to get on camera. <laughs> Show us your ring. They got engaged and they are getting married next year in April. And we are so excited to have you up as a part of the, you're going to become a part of the Moore family. I know she's going to become a part of the Marable family, but you're going to become a part of the Moore family. Of course, you've only, you've seen a branch already, but there are several mm -hmm. other branches that you must meet, okay? And if they know that you can cook good food, oh, baby, you already in. <laughs> Indeed. So I want to say welcome to the Moore family, and we appreciate you because I literally called you at the last minute. And you said, give me a minute, let me check, and then call me back and said, we could do it. Let's do it. But I need to do yeah, it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you for that. I really do. And the food looks amazing. It does. You. Thank you. Thank you. It really does. It's my honor. Thank you. Is there anything else you want to say about Amazing Grace Blessings? Um, no, if you want to, if you want to go look at the uh, website or the Facebook, just look up Amazing Grace Blessings. Uh, you'll see a variety of foods, healthy, non-healthy, some sinful foods, but some that will bring you back, that it puts you on a healthy track. And um, as I mentioned, in a couple months, I'll um, be putting some five to ten minute video clips on uh, for healthy tips, some trade offs, and some substitutes that you can do and not feel guilty or depressed about. Okay. And we um we'll we'll share those. And it's it's funny because you do the cooking, the healthy food side, and Lynette does the working out in the other side. So on her, if she she can tell us also uh, where we can follow her as well. She's working out every day, videos all those good things. And she has this drink that we can try as well. So tell us about that. Drink to Shrink. You can follow me on Facebook and into Instagram. On Instagram, I'm Mad Fit Lim, Lynn. Lynn. M-A-D-F-I-T-L-Y-N-N. -N. And on, you know, I'm trying to get used to this camera. <laughs> and on, on Facebook, I am W. Lynette Moore. Farlow, W. Lynette Moore Farlow, and absolutely drink to shrink. We are drinking and shrinking, literally. It's a detox juice that tastes like Kool Aid. Mm -hmm. Tastes like Kool Aid. Lose five pounds in five days. So on Facebook, you can follow me at W. Lynette Moore 
Farlow, W. Lynette Moore Farlow on Facebook and Mad Fit Lynn on Instagram. And yes, we are, and basically we're just a community of individuals who are getting fit. So right now we have a walking challenge. Just get 5,000 to 10,000 steps in a day, period. However you do it, whenever you do it, get 5,000 to 10,000 steps in a day. And I'm starting to run, y'all. So I'm getting my steps in by running. Because, again, I'm working on my island wedding body. That's <laughs> so right. I'm running my steps. I'm running my steps. But just walk. Just walk. And you will feel better. And then you can drink the strength with us. So yeah, thanks for having us. I'm going to be running my steps again so that I can put on my dress. Because, you know, I got to be cute coming to the wedding next year. Absolutely. Maybe. I might be here plus one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Thank you so much. We appreciate yes. you guys, a healthy, fit family, trying to help other people get fit as well. We appreciate you for showing up last minute. There she go. Oh, there yeah, she she go. Oh, you're trying to tease us. Uh -huh. <laughs> so good. <laughs> All right, y'all. Thank you so much. And like Thank I said, you. we are going to post um any of his um five minute sessions when he puts them online and we'll also put the link to all of your um youtube pages facebook pages so that people y'all can help our people get fit that's what we want we inspire and we motivate our ladies and men because we got quite a bit men following us so this is great inspiration tonight thank you guys again See thank you, later. you. thank you for having us to inspire her the total woman. Yes. Bye.